moment on, we realized that the phone was the key. And so we, we if you look at our profiles, you're probably going to find a bunch of different selfies that we took. It's not that we're vain. It's we were trying to connect with the kids. So let me introduce you real quick to this team. I, I've given you a name. This is Bobby. This is Ezra. I'm Josh, Emma, and Robert. I'm going to start with Robert. And, and, and what we're doing is we're live streaming this so their families can see some people that aren't able to be here. Plus, we were asked to live stream it because a lot of the people in the Philippines will be watching right now and joining us as we're doing this service. So hello to all of them. Yes. Uh, they've already concluded church. Right now, it is 9.35 p.m. Sunday night in the Philippines. Um, and so in their bodies, it's 9.35 p.m. too, all right? And so it's almost time for bed, and we're just getting the day started. Um, but I want them to just kind of share, um, and, and like I said, hold both of those close so that you can be heard online and on there. I think it's kind of dangerous to start with Robert, but uh, he's already got the mic. So, uh, Joe, or, or whoever's up there, we're going to go with green, all right, is going to be the speaking mic, so if you'll boost that one, and then uh, just, just talk clearly into that if you don't mind and point that out. There you go. All right? Robert. I didn't want to go first. Um, mm. I think the thing that stuck out to me the most this year was um, Josh and I got to stay over and talk with uh, some of the pastors, and we bonded with them and spoke with them and clarified some stuff up. But on one of those days, um, we got to go, Jack and Margaret got a van, and we also got a Jeep me for the kids. So the first year we went, all the kids just walked home. They just, we literally sat at the end of the resort and cried and watched them walk home pretty much. Uh, so the Second year we went, uh, they had some trikes. Um, they literally loaded 20 kids on these little trikes and took them home at a time. This year they had a jeepney. There it is, right there. They had this jeepney loaded with all the kids on it, and it literally broke down in like, what, five seconds? <laughs> As it got down the road, uh, and Jack and Marpet were just like, we don't know what to do, and I just want to throw out there that us, as a church, we bought them a jeepney, and... That is the greatest thing that I've been a part of, and it's just touched my heart. And thank you guys for supporting our calling and your calling as well. Thank you. Now what? I, I, I just want to clarify that point. We, we took money that had been donated. Some of the money went to building the church. Um, I'll get to that in just a second. But we were able to physically purchase a jeepney that the church now owns. Mm -hmm. And, and Jack, who's standing in the middle of that picture in the front near Bobby, uh, said that they were able to use funds that Grace Community Church has been sending over uh, to do that. And so I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. As a pastor, my heart was exploding in that moment. We were standing on this road looking at a jeepney. It, it's very, very dangerous to stand on a road in the Philippines because no. they drive insane. <laughs> And, and where we were standing, there had to be a thousand piles of dog poop. And I'm not even exaggerating. It was like dogmageddon everywhere. <laughs> and, and here we are standing there looking at this jeepney. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. It was one of the nicest ones that we had ever seen in the Philippines. And it, was, it had been sitting there for two or three months. And, and Jack and Marpet had gone to buy a van to transport missions and, and been told by the person selling the van that he had found this jeepney. And so we went over and looked at this jeepney, and, and, and God gave us the ability to make a deal right there on the spot, you know. And so uh, now, this morning, I've already re been receiving pictures from their church service, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But Dina Hinkin was an area that we went to, and, and they had so many people come from Dina Hinkin this morning that said there were so many others that wanted to come, but they can't afford to get here. And they told me, they sent me a message that next week they're sending the jeepney into that area. Yeah. And so it, we're excited about that. It's incredible. All right, this is Emma. Hi, I'm extremely nervous. Um, one of, I'll, I'll tell you what I told the kids there. I thought I was going to minister to the kids, but it turns out the kids ministered to me. And I think um, in America we get that mindset where we're here to change other people's lives but we don't realize that in our own lives, we need something to change. And so, yeah, um, my verse for the week 
was Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's a really cool thing that happened. Um, at the begin beginning of the trip, Bobby had this ring of bracelets. And so I took one, and it was Philippians 4.13. And then whenever I was dealing with my anxiety throughout the trip, I would go to Bobby, and he would quote to me Philippians 4.13. And then at the very end in that picture, they would give us, they gave us this gift, and one of the gifts was a bookmark. And my bookmark, each of us had our own Bible verses on it, and mine had Philippians 4.13 on it. So it was an amazing thing that happened. And, like, I'm just shocked with how God works. I also wanted to talk about one of the things that really got to me there was the jail. And, like, there will be pictures later. But, like, yeah. Um, it's so cramped in there, yet, and like the people in there live such hard lives. But meeting those people in the jail, they were more grateful than most of the people I've met here. Mm -hmm. They were so grateful and kind and loving, and they're just, it was amazing. Um, and the youth conference, that was probably my favorite part of the whole trip. It was, Whenever those kids see through everything, whenever I was dealing with my anxiety, like they would just look at me and they would say, "What's wrong?" And the kids were such a blessing to me. Like I'll miss them very lot, a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm just blessed, and it's amazing that God was able to use me on this trip because I never thought I could ever do anything with my life, but God showed me differently. Amen. Amen. So I, I, I need to, for those of you just now meeting Emma, Emma does not speak publicly. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Ever. Um, until now. <laughs> and in the Philippines. I, I will say this, and I, I'm proud of everybody on this team, but, and, and, and I'm not an award giver, but there, there's probably no one, no offense, that I was more proud of than this girl right here. About two days in, Emma got sun poisoning, and literally this side of her face swelled, her eyes swelled shut, and she never missed a thing. I mean, she kept coming back out there. The kids, because of pale skin in the Philippines, to be pale is to be rich or beautiful. Dark skin is a representation of hardship and poverty, and so when they see a light-skinned girl, it's immediately, you're Maganda, you're beautiful. And they want to rub your skin. And Emma's skin looked like a lobster. <laughs> and I would turn around and see Emma letting them rub her skin, knowing good and well that she probably wanted to slap anybody touching her, you know? <laughs> and, and, and she just connected on a deep level with each of these kids. And, and it was beautiful. Matter of fact, we were driving to Manila on, I guess, Monday night. And I got this message on Facebook. And, and, and it was a, one of the girls from the conference, and they said, Pastor Josh, are you still in the Philippines? Yes. What are you doing? Driving to Manila. Where's Emma? In the van in front of me. They stopped talking to me. <laughs> I mean, they were not messaging me anymore. It was like all they wanted was Emma. You know? And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> you know? Um, and so Emma, Emma did an incredible job and spoke on multiple occasions over there, and, and I'm just thankful for what God did in her life. If you knew Emma a year ago, and it's not my story to tell. But if you knew Emma a year ago, you would know that this is what grace looks like. This is what God's love can do. And we're very, very proud of her. Ezra is a uh, Philippine sensation. <laughs> Everywhere we went, they wanted to marry him. <laughs> Am I right, Bobby? I mean, they would line up for an hour to take a picture with Ezra. I found myself taking pictures of people taking pictures of Ezra. <laughs> like, I want to get a selfie, but I had to go to Ezra's little groupie line to get one. <laughs> I was so glad when Ezra left, because then they saw me and Robert again. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm joking. But Ezra, go ahead. 
Uh, first of all, I just want to say that it was such a blessing to serve along each and every single one of them, uh, just to see them step out of their comfort zones, and the way that they interacted was a true blessing to my heart. Um, my biggest moment would have to be, as in Dina Hinkin at the school, where 30% of them are orphans, and as many of you all might know, I have a big thing with orphans. Um, going up to that part, we were told we need to be in full prayer about strength of how um, stigious this could be, how hard it could be. In that whole moment, I just stayed there and prayed, God, give me your, your supernatural strength in any obstacle that I face in this time. After the end of that, we all can probably agree, if they, since they've been there multiple times, that it was one of the easiest, smooth processes of putting on flip-flops ever. Yeah, 600 kids. Yeah, 600 kids. But as I was there putting flip-flops on the kids' feet, I kept noticing the kids would go like this, that they would put their feet behind the chairs. And in the moment, I didn't know what was going on. But then I realized they were ashamed of their feet because they were dirty. But as soon as you put on new flip-flops, their eyes brightened. They reached out and gave you hugs. They gave you high fives. In that moment, I feel like that that's how God is. You see, we come to him, we have dirt, we're ashamed of the, how our past used to be. But God is just there wanting us to come just as we are with open arms and just give us the love that fills that hole and deep down inside of us. And so I just I fell in love there. Amen. I just want to say all praise and glory to God the Father through our Son, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity to serve with this amazing people and to serve along Jack and Marpet in their obedience and serving Christ there, and Pastor Dennis and all the ones at JPA Mission Church for what they do, and also... Um, my brother in Christ, Pastor Nathan, Amen. which is a blessing. And um, this is my third year going, and I've um, built relationships with a lot of kids. And one of the blessings to me is seeing these kids grow in Christ, becoming leaders. And um, it, it was a very moving and touching in my heart. And if you notice in some of these pictures that I have a long beard, <laughs> I put out a challenge that if 160 kids come to youth camp, that I would shave my beard. Well, all glory to God, there was 237 kids. And you know what humbling experience was? is them kids got to stay and there wasn't enough room. And they slept on the porches. But they're just so excited to hear about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And a blessing to me also in this trip was seeing God move in and through each one of these people on this team. I got to see things that they have invested in through the love of Christ work through them. And I don't want to take that from them because they'll probably share about that later on or in testimony. But it was amazing, and I'm so thankful for this opportunity to serve. I love each and one, every, everyone here that prayed for us because we felt your prayers. And um, it's overwhelming how much God loves us. Amen. And I love you, and I thank you. I'm going to give just a, a quick list. Sorry, I forgot. Sorry about that. 
we have a mic for the online, and so they can only hear if I'm holding this one. Um, but I wrote down, I just started writing this morning the things that we saw God accomplish. Um, I'll come back to some things that I want to share with you in the sermon here in just a second. But I, I, as I was writing, I ran out of time. I've got 27 things that God did through this team. Number one, we were able to plant and dedicate a library to where we took Christian resources in a public university. They gave us an opportunity to come in and do a library dedication to which 100 students were invited and 75 accepted Christ. After that, they asked us and begged us to come back the next day, which was not in our schedule. And if you saw our schedule this year, it was loaded from end to end. There was no room. So we made room to come back and speak to a college graduation to where over 300 of the graduates accepted Jesus Christ. Many of those graduates had been prostituting themselves just to make it through school. On selling drugs and different things just to make it through school. And gave their heart to Jesus Christ on their last day of school. We went to Magsaysay and we fed a lot of students in a very poor area. And, and got to spend some time just singing with them and dancing with them. And, and it just filled our hearts. We went to a school in Infanta. There's the college graduation, by the way. We went to the school in Infanta, a high school, where we were able to give them 135 chairs, to which they were so excited they made us sign declaration contracts and gave us certificates of honor um, for giving them chairs. And at that school, we saw anywhere, and we cannot estimate exactly, we saw and heard, that's key, heard, Anywhere between 13 to 1,600 students give their heart to Jesus Christ. We went to Dina Hinkin, which has already been, there's the graduates that got saved at the, uh, or the people saved at the library dedication, all of those accepted Christ. Uh, we went to Dina Hinkin, which is an area that's very dear to my heart, and I'll share a little bit later. There's the high school where over 1,300 accepted Christ. Um, we uh, got to put the flip-flops on, and like Ezra said, there's something special about taking a foot that's covered in sores and hurt and, and dirty, putting it in your hands and sliding a shoe on. There's something special about the look that takes over their faces as they jump up in excitement where they sit down in shame. And Ezra, I thought that was beautiful the way you talked about that's how it is with God. We did a youth conference where 237 students showed up. Many of them had to sleep outside on porches because the place of which we rented only holds 150. I want to tell a story about this that I want you never to forget. The place that we use has a shoreline of which we play games. We've taught kids over the past three years how to throw a frisbee, how to do different things. There's the shoreline. Now, I want you to pause that picture. I want you to look at that different colors of sand, and I want to give you something. In September of 2018, you can see the kids on the left sitting on bags of sand because a typhoon came through and literally stripped away the entire beach. When we arrived, the water was clear up to the sandbags, and they had told us that there was no beach left. Now listen, a full moon came out that night and took the tide out. And where we stayed, and you can ask them, I have pictures that I couldn't get uploaded today, only where we stayed and held this conference, the ocean literally receded 50 yards off the shore so that we could go out. You can see the discolored sand of where the ocean is typically at. And we were able to spend all the time, it literally left for us to go out there, and when we finished our three hours of recreation time, it came back. I stood there and I looked at Jack and I said, this has to be what Moses felt like when they stood at the Red Sea and saw God draw out that water. And he said, yeah, the only difference is God made that ground completely dry. And in that moment, I sat there and I thought, God, who is this kind of God that we serve that can tell the oceans how far they can come? And so as we did that, we were able to baptize because we weren't going to be able to. We, there was one night that we got there and we had an hour left of daylight. We were going to dive in the ocean and it was so rough that we couldn't. And we literally at one point stood and prayed and rebuked the sea. I'm so glad that Jesus doesn't have to be physically in the boat. That he's still physically in the heart. And that in the heart can do the same things he did for disciples in the boat. 
And I say that to say this to you. You may feel like you're on the shore that is sinking and you may feel like you're in a storm that's overtaking, but you still have the master of the seas in your arsenal. Tap into that and let God be God and watch what he does. And you could see that down the shore, it was all the way up. On the other side, all the way up, but there was a perfect bowl right where we were so that God allowed us to do the, the, the ministry that he had for us there. To which I have a video of Robert that one day you need to see. <laughs> they did an obstacle course. And you had to go under these. They made it military, so you ran through tires. And then you had to dive <laughs> un- underneath this little rope barrier. And for some reason, <laughs> Robert thought he could slide across the sand. So Robert goes full steam and dives arms straight out and hits the sands and just thuds. It was like, (laughs) I have the video. It will be on Facebook this week. Yeah. (laughs) After the youth conference was over where we saw 161 students accept Jesus Christ within the first 10 minutes of the conference. All right. We got to baptize the majority of those in that ocean. After that, the, the, uh, the Saturday night, they do different dances and different things for us, interpretive things. I'm going to tell you, they took songs and they acted it out of what Christ can do in lives. And the very first one was Jesus walking in and taking the alcohol out of somebody's hand and throwing it away. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, I'm about to lose it right here in a youth conference, you know, as it symbolized. But after that, we, we got this call from the contractor, the, the uh, what do they call that? The guy, the architect, or yeah, that's over the project of the church we're building in the Philippines. There's been a lot of red tape that's held that back. He called, and we, we asked him if he'd come over so we could meet with him Sunday. He called and said he was coming right then. He came over about 10 p.m. on Saturday night and asked us if we were ready to start. He asked us if we would do a groundbreaking ceremony the next day. I've never been a part of a groundbreaking ceremony like this. I know we broke ground on this church building, the children's facility back there. But I'm going to tell you something. There is something magical about this moment. It's supernatural when you're standing there and you're realizing that the headquarters of the missions that we do is going to be built here. And we lowered a time capsule in the ground with our prayers and different things written in it that will never be dug up. And our, the footers for that church are going to be started this week. And, and I go back three weeks from now to the Philippines. And when I get there, they're expecting to have a lot of the footers and part of the structure already started. And my heart is just overwhelmed with joy knowing that where 2,778 people accepted Christ, there is going to be a place of discipleship and training for them because the Great Commission is not completed if we just go and teach them or give them Jesus and baptize them. No, the next verse says, teach them, walk with them and disciple them. And there we are doing that. And Pastor Dennis, a pastor of JPA Mission Church of Ben Lazan, is an amazing man. And, and is doing an amazing job. They're right now meeting in a borrowed house. Um, this morning, as I looked at the pictures, I think they had well over 100 show up this morning with 75% of that 100 being children. Just think of that. I look at that and I say, man, God's on the move here. So we went back to Dina Hinkin because on Monday we were supposed to go to the island that nobody's ever been to. Sunday night, the ship captain calls us and says he refuses to take us. Because the ocean was so violent that he was scared we wouldn't make it. Or if we did make it, we wouldn't get back. My heart broke. It sank. But God had another plan, and I'll share that with you later. We certified. uh, 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 We sent them back on Wednesday. And and we stayed around. I met. I I don't know if you know this, but, but God has given us the opportunity. And I say us. I'm including you in that. I've been asked to take over the pastor's training throughout all the Philippines, and, and I got certified to do that. That's why we stayed behind as we met with those that were uh, that over this and met with the pastors that are doing this. I, I want to give you a, a number that I want you to wrap your mind around. In the past year and a half, 20 churches have been planted in the Philippines that are now reaching people through graduates that have come through this training program. And we, as a church, because I believe where God calls me, he calls you too. We as a church have been asked to now train that into more. While we were there, we agreed to plant three other churches, and now there's three more churches on top of the one we planted in, in Ben Lazan on different islands throughout the Philippines. And before you start saying, 
Well, everybody goes to the Philippines. There's 7,100 plus islands in the Philippines, and most of them are only reached by Muslims and, and deep cultish Catholic. Now, understand this. Now we have churches going out into all these areas. When I go back in a month, we'll graduate 65 pastors and leaders that will go out and start ministries, if not join other ministries that are already in existence. We, we've seen uh, different things. We bought, our church bought a piano for the church, mic stands, guitar stands. We have now fully equipped JPA Mission Church of Benelazan with all the sound equipment they need to be able to minister, and, and they are doing a wonderful job. And that's just a fraction of what we saw God do. So I'm going to share with you just a thought that God gave me, but before I do, I'm going to give the kids an opportunity to head on out to class so that they can go and, and just celebrate and, and learn about Jesus. Y'all did an awesome job. While they're going, turn around to somebody that's beside you and say hi. Will you do that? Introduce yourself to somebody near you.